Hello, everyone. My name is Yifang Ban. On behalf of my team, I would like to tell you about our project, EOAI for Global Change. How do we use Earth's observation big data and deep learning for global environmental change monitoring? As you all know, uh, our world has been exper uh, experiencing rapid urbanization and the rapid ur urbanization has a very strong environmental impact, including urban heat island, increased pollution, uh, urban uh, flash flooding, and, and impact on biodiversity. And in recent years, the wildfires has been increasing in intensity, frequency, and duration around the world. And the wildfires cause devastating human and environmental impact. And uh, UN has um, called for early warnings for all. This is a UN global early warning initiative for the implementation of climate adaptation. Uh, observation, monitoring, uh, analysis, and forecasting uh, is one of the pillars, one of the four pillars of the multi-hazard early warning uh, systems. So our research is well connected to that uh, early warning for all. The op uh, overall objectives of this research are to develop innovative methods for monitoring global environmental changes with a specific focus on urbanization and wildfires by leveraging EO big data and deep learning through interdisciplinary research and collaborations uh, with select stakeholders. We have an interdisciplinary uh, research team. Uh, myself and Andrea Nassetti are from Division of Geoinformatics at the School of Architecture and Build Environment. Uh, Josephine Sullivan and Hossein Azizpour are from Computer Vision and Machine Learning Division. Uh, from the EECS school at KDH. Uh, Ula Monteberry is an environmental scientist from uh, Sustainable Development, the Environmental Science and Engineering uh, Department uh, uh, from ABE school. Uh, not only we work, you know, across discipline, uh, disciplines, we also work uh, closely with stakeholders, including the city of Stockholm, the UN Habitat, and Swedish uh, Civil Contingency Agency, Swedish Forest Authority, uh, British Columbia Wildfire Services, British Columbia Ministry of Forest, Land, and Nature uh, Resources. For environmental change monitoring, we have uh, many Earth observation satellites that collect petabytes of data um, from the early uh, 1970s. So we have 50 years uh, archives of data that are uh, really um, well suited for environmental change monitoring. Using uh, both optical and radar uh, images, we have developed a deep learning based method for urban mapping uh, and uh, change detection. Uh, so we have a, a number of publications on these topics. Uh, I don't have time to explain uh, these methods in detail. If you're interested, you're welcome to uh, take a look at the publications. Uh, one example is uh, for urban mapping. We have uh, developed a, a method called unsupervised domain adaptation. So we use uh, Microsoft building footprints 
uh, in North America as labels. Um, then uh, we uh, adapted uh, using unlabeled data uh, from Asia, Africa, uh, Europe, uh, you know, because urban has different uh, uh, morphology and uh, different uh, conditions in different parts of the world. Um, so we introduced a domain gap and then we uh, trained and validated uh, our models in different sites around the world. Uh, as you can see here, the results from Stockholm, uh, we can detect uh, both high density buildup areas as well as uh, uh, low density uh, buildup areas in the suburbs uh, uh, very well. And this is an example of uh, change detection uh, we have performed uh, using SpaceNet 7 um, datasets, the continuous change detection datasets. Uh, we uh, trained our models on the Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2 open free data. Uh, or we also use a number of sites around, uh, around the world and our uh, method uh, perform better than uh, other uh, approaches. Uh, using satellite images, we can also uh, look at uh, temporal trends and special patterns of urban heat island. Uh, so uh, uh, here is the example of Athens. Uh, from 1990 and 2020, you can see increased uh, urbanization or the, you know, uh, has uh, had more impact, uh, more urban heat island uh, in the city. Uh, we have also developed tools for SDG, uh, urban SDG monitoring. Uh, we developed a city definition tool and also indicator 11.3.1 land use efficiency calculator uh, that uh, has been uh, in included in the EU4 SDG toolkit uh, at the UN Habitat uh, uh, Geo uh, site. And uh, the toolkit has been um, mentioned in the UN Habitats report to the 2023 UN High Level uh, Political Forum uh, in the report Rescuing SDG 11 for Resilient Urban Planet. I also contributed uh, to this report. Uh, using a uh, multi sensor satellite uh, image time series. Uh, we have developed a variety of methods for wildfire monitoring. So here you can see from very high resolution satellite images uh, to low resolution images uh, with high frequency. And in uh, Asen, Rhode Island um, in uh, Greece, uh, this is a fire during the summer uh, that, you know, no clouds, but in the British Columbia or in Canada, uh, in the boreal environment, there are a lot of clouds. We also use uh, radar images to monitor uh, wildfire progression. So using uh, satellite images and deep learning, we have developed methods for active fire uh, uh, detection. And uh, these uh, results uh, are um, uh, more uh, reliable than the uh, NASA wildfire active fire uh, product that has some overestimation. And uh, so you can also check out our publications uh, uh, if you are interested. And we also developed um, uh, AI powered methods for near real time uh, wildfire progression uh, monitoring. Um, so using both uh, radar and optical uh, images uh, at a, a high, uh, 30, 20 meter resolution. So here is the example of a result 
uh, near real time wildfire uh, monitoring, uh, use both optical and radar images. Uh, the results are uh, very uh, promising. And uh, what through the work we discovered the fully supervised learning did not generalize well across geographic uh, regions. Um, so as you can see there, uh, just in uh, North America, there are many different local climate zones. So we want to uh, uh, develop a unsupervised domain adaptation uh, approach uh, for for this uh, as well. So using um, the uh, training data from Canada and uh, as a, a source domain, and then we use uh, Alaska and USA as a target domain. And uh, what we found is that um, the domain adaptation approach can improve generalization across regions. Um, the, uh, the results show that maybe Sentinel-2 um, adapted uh, better than uh, Sentinel-1. Um, and the fusion has a, a slightly better result than Sentinel-2 alone. Uh, so this is a work in progress and we are, um, uh, we'll be working more on this, uh, continue the work. And wildfires has a variety of environmental impact. Here we are uh, estimating above ground about uh, biomass loss uh, using uh, you know burned areas uh, in Canada overlapping with the uh, biomass map and what we can see during 2017 to 2022 what's the total uh, biomass loss due to fires and also from which land cover types um, so majority as you can see are from trees and uh, a small amount from rangeland and very limited um, uh, from other type of vegetation, uh, uh, land cover types. Uh, we can also uh, use satellite uh, images or satellite data to estimate uh, uh, CO and CO2 uh, emissions caused by wildfires. Uh, as you can see here, uh, more fires uh, in April, very limited uh, emission in North, uh, from fire from in uh, North America, but uh, gradually it's increasing. Uh, this is this year. Uh, so uh, by differencing them, we can see um, estimate the total emission because of fire. Thank you uh, very much for listening.